We've been talking a lot about the COVID-19 vaccine, who should get it and when they should get it and about the vaccines as well. So I decided to turn to our favorite doctor, Dr. Avital Harari from UCLA to ask what her experience was. You got the vaccine, Avital, or doctor. I did, for having me. <laughs> so, so tell me about that experience and what, what went through your mind as you approached getting the vaccine? What did you learn? Because I know that you study things before you do anything. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> and, you know, my friends and family were asking me about these, these vaccines back in the summer. And I said, you know what? I have to see the data. Just like any other good physician, you need to see the data before you're going to jump into a treatment or even offer a treatment to your patients. It's really important. So, you know, as the as everything was developing, we were watching and seeing what the phase phase one, phase two, phase three child results were showing. And uh, what was good is that we saw phase one results, which are usually a safety efficacy thing, um, were positive. They were the, It was safe to administer. And then we had to see, you know, does it work? And so um, in November, December, they came out with the phase three results of the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines. And both of them were highly effective, much more than we ever expected. Hmm. And just having gone through all of that data and science and, and safety, um, I, we, I, along with many other physicians and healthcare workers in the country, decided to, to go ahead and move forward with vaccination and um, really lucky, really lucky that I was able to receive them. Which, which uh, vaccine did you receive? I got the Pfizer vaccine. Okay, so tell me the process of how you went about d doing that and what the Pfizer vaccine provides. So the Pfizer vaccine, just like the Moderna vaccine, is an mRNA vaccine. This is a new-ish type of vaccine. It hasn't been out for other infectious diseases prior to this, although there have been phase one trials in Zika and rabies and influenza, cytomegalovirus. They're, they're in the process of doing other phases for other mm -hmm. in infections. It's been used in the past for cancer uh, treatments, um, not quite successfully in regards to its efficacy, but we, it's, it's safe. So it's a well-known uh, method of delivery. It just is much more effective in this particular um, against this particular virus. And so what it does is it basically gets a little piece of the genetic code and uses your cells, basically your muscular cells where it's injected. And those cells will then produce the little spike protein. You've probably heard a lot about this spike protein. Yeah. It yeah. basically covers the um, uh, coronavirus. It's, it's corona. It covers the corona, right? The outside part of that virus. Yeah. Exactly. And so those little spike proteins, um, if your cells produce it, your body knows that that's not you. And, and because it knows that it's not natural to you, it will fight those little proteins. The good news is it's a temporary. That little genetic code disintegrates and your body is now primed to fight any exposure for, from coronavirus. And so what happens is you'll, get, you'll go in, you'll make an appointment. Uh, they'll inject the vaccine into your arm. And then about three or four weeks later, you'll get sort of what's called a booster shot. It makes the immune response even more, um, even more effective. And there's other, there are other vaccines that have done this, like hepatitis B, hepatitis A. There are other vaccines who, that require booster shots. Right. Um, what we don't know is how long the um, effect will last. It could be a lifetime effect, or it could be a year where we get a booster every year. We're not sure yet, but um, that's sort of the process that I went through mentally and um, physically getting it. Were you ever concerned that it came to market so quickly? You know, I wasn't concerned because they were going through all the appropriate steps. Um, the reason that it came so quickly is that it kind of, all the stars kind of aligned. All of the hoops that they normally have to go through uh, with funding, uh, with regula regulations, um, these were made much easier and streamlined for these companies. And so when you get rid of all those impediments, science can move quickly. And they did this huge randomized control stu um, study mm -hmm. in a small amount of time, but it's, it's only possible because we have so much disease. So it's easy to get to the end point when there's so much around. And they did not cut any corners. I mean, they did 30,000 participants in one stu study, 40,000 in another. And this is the best type of study you could ever do because what they do is they take a very large amount of patients they put half into placebo arms, so you're uh, uh, maybe getting you know saline injected, and then the half has the vaccine, and it gets rid of any biases or differences between the participants, so that could affect you know maybe the outcome, and this is basically the gold standard of studies. And so with two studies using the two same methods, 
um, they found the same exact efficacy, which is 95% effective. And it, I mean, you cannot get better than that. That's fantastic. So you've had both shots. Did you have any reaction to the shots? What was that experience like for you? Yeah, no, it's a good question. The side effects to these shots are uh, variable between people. Uh, for me, particularly, I got a sore arm both times and I couldn't sleep that night because of it, it was sore and I just oh. kept rolling onto it, waking up and going on to the other side. That didn't last more than that night. Uh, the following night was fine. Uh, the second shot gave me a little bit of fatigue the evening of, which was hard to do and you can't sleep <laughs> because of the sore arm. Yeah. But I got over it about the mid next day. Uh, it does vary though, the side effects, you know, it, especially after the second shot, when your immune system is already primed a little bit and then becomes more primed, it's actually a sign that it's working, uh, that your body is forming these, this reaction. Um, so that hopefully never later when you're exposed to the actual virus, it will get rid of it very quickly. Uh, but those, those, uh, side effects can range. And I've seen these amongst physicians because we talk to each other, um, uh, anywhere from the pain in the injection site, like 80% of people have that. Uh, you have fatigue, fever, muscle pain, joint pains, um, some redness at the site. And they vary from, you know, 10% up to 60% and mm. not everybody gets everything. So, um, you know, you could feel a little bit off in the first day or two, but luckily it's usually temporary. Now, um, there have been reports of anaphylaxis, which are um, extreme allergic reactions to the shots. This is normally one in a million. And in with these shots, it's one in two to 300,000. So it's slightly more um, common. But so, so they're not giving it to people who have a history of anaphylaxis. So if you have a history of that, which other people do to other drugs, uh, you they would know are that. much more yeah, cautious. You would know that. There's also a, 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 in the actual particle that they inject, there's something called um, PEG which is uh, if you have you some people know that they have a reaction to that ingredient and those people cannot get this particular vaccine. Well, I'm so glad that you got your vaccine because we need all of you on the front lines. It's been a really tough, tough season and we appreciate all the hard work that you're doing and saving lives and doing all the great work that you do. Dr. Avital Harari, thank you so much. And, and thanks for all the great information you just gave us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.